Hey guys, Russ here from Wilson Land and Cattle Company. Today I wanted to talk about non-selective grazing and biodiversity. Before we get started, please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, hit that notification bell. Uh, watch the video to the end. I'm going to do some drone footage of the cows moving into the last paddock of this field. Take a walk through the cow herd here. Just take a look at them. All doing really well. There's buttons. Blueberry. This is mama and daughter. Mama, blueberry's the daughter, mama, and buttons is her daughter. This field has been rested for almost 360 days. This field got a lot of asters in it. That's not a common plant that the livestock like to eat. There's uh, field bindweed, there is horse nettle, dog bane. I mean, you name it. It's very, very diverse. And one of the things about diversity is those plants bring nutrients up for the other plants, but not only that, it gives a better balanced ration for the cows and the sheep, whatever's grazing it, I guess, for the most part. If we were just, say we were to just feed our cows corn silage, just feeding them corn silage, here's kind of weird to me. Oh, it's an ant mound. If we were to feed those cows just corn silage, we'd be very, very limited in the nutrients that they're getting. In the aspect that they're only eating one, one uh, plant. So if we have all these other plants, there is a lot of nutrients or micronutrients available to those animals. Just walking over here to show you. Um, these branches here all had leaves on them this morning. And they cleaned them off. This here is where the, we moved the cows into this morning. And you say, well, if that, that's been rested for 360 days, that's really poor quality for those cows. You know, if we look at some of the cow pats here, you know, our goal is the consistency of pumpkin pie with a dimple in the center of it. It's hard to find because they got it all spread out. Hey girls, this is my biggest cow. Let's take a look here. See here, pumpkin pie with a dimple in the center. It's still got a cow track in it. So the manure pads are really good. Here we go. That one there is just a, just a smidge too tight. Whenever they're too tight like that, that means they're not getting quite enough protein. And that's okay, because we're working these girls. I want them to work. I don't want them to, I want them to be able to survive on twigs and, and leaves and just very poor quality stuff. <laughs> I got the mob following me. They're ready to be moved. Here's one that's almost too loose. Let's walk over in here. I was hoping to find some horse nettle and show it to you, but they've they've what they've eaten it all. So here's some horse nettle. That will be gone in the morning. This here's wound wound wart. I was doing some writing down there, uh, uh, buttercup. We got some field bindweed here. And you can see it's really difficult to walk in, which to me that is ideal. 
I want a field that's very, very hard to walk in. That means there's a lot of tonnage here. If we take a look down in, let's take a look. There's a lot of bro brome grass. This here is smooth brome grass. I seeded that in here probably, oh, back in 2010. I seeded this smooth, smooth brome grass. This field actually ran this way and I actually cut the end of it off to go with soil type because I'd get back to this part and you couldn't graze it because it would be too wet. Let's take a look down in underneath here once. See what we have. Lots and lots of aggregation. You know, this is kind of what we want to see. See this soil aggregation here? We want to see that. We don't care if there's a bare spot in underneath, as long as we have 100% cover across the, the field. Now, we're very, very blessed when it comes to non-selective grazing with these cows. Uh, it used to be they wouldn't eat the dog bane, they wouldn't eat the thistles, bindweed, buttercups, um, what else? I mean, they were very, very, very selective. As a lot of as, as a lot of cows are, and the way that we okay, you can see here we have a fence running up this way. This field actually went clear to the woods, and then we our soil type runs this way, so we actually cut the end of it off, and it's a lot easier to graze and not have a bunch of fields that we didn't get grazed up across here. Okay, how did I get these girls to eat? Be non-selective grazers. You can see this is run, run flat. Lots of manure distribution. You don't see those horse nettles and all those other ones. The way that we did that is we put the animals in a high stock density situation. For a while there, we were running the cows at 400,000 pounds to the acre. And doing that, and right now we're, we're at about 100,000 pounds with them here right now. 400,000 pounds to the acre, that puts them in there pretty tight. And they have a competitiveness on the aspect that if they don't eat it, their buddy's going to eat it. So they want to, you know, they're kind of greedy in that aspect. So, hey buttons, they're greedy. See, we're, we're mean and nasty to our, our cows, huh? A lot of people say that we mistreat our animals. Do you think a cow would walk up to you like that if she was being mistreated? No, I don't think so. Huh, Buttons? That's a good girl. But back to the, the non-selective grazing. When we put them in that 400,000 pounds, they become kept competitive eaters on the aspect that they'll eat everything and whenever they have the competitiveness like that they start eating everything and then after a period of time um, you know that's going to vary from animal to animal they'll start eating all this stuff and then whenever they have calves then they're gonna teach their calves this cow here she eats bull thistles she eats the tops out of the bull thistles and i seen her she's got a I think she's got a heifer on her this year. Her heifer was actually nipping at the leaves. I had mentioned diversity here on the farm. We sat down and I started logging all the species that we found here on the farm. And so far I'm up to 179 species, which I think is tremendous.
Okay, well that didn't work out quite as planned. I wanted to do a fly over the field here and my remote control was went dead on me. So hopefully the moving the cows was good enough. I'm gonna do some B-roll footage of tearing out this fence and reeling it up with our fence winder. Scout's hard on my reel winder. He sure has put it to the test. Go get the hawk. Hey, go get the hawk. Can I have the hook? Can I have it? No? All right. Being a shithead, huh? Let's see, all my hooks are chewed up. Scout has chewed them all. Hook fair lead up. Go get the hawk. Hey, go get the hawk. Scout, go get the hawk. <laughs> Toby's warm. <laughs> I'm gonna take her over. It's a salt tank. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, hit the notification bell. And at the bottom of the video, there's a, a thanks button. If you feel that we did good enough to uh, give us a tip, we'd appreciate it. If not, that's fine. You don't have to, but it is greatly appreciated. And we'll talk to you on the next one. Have a great day.